For kids who grew up in the mid-20th century, few things in life were as exciting as the local department store at Christmas. Each year, these stores seemed to outdo themselves with the festivities. There were toys of all kinds as far as the eye could see. The big man himself was waiting on his throne to meet you. And if you were lucky enough, Christmas time also meant a ride on the monorail. Just imagine flying over aisles of toys, wondering which ones might be under the tree on Christmas morning. Earlier this year, I came across two odd pieces of history. One was a Christmas monorail ride at a department store in Portland, Oregon. The other appeared to be the same ride, but this one was in Atlanta, Georgia. So now this begged the question, how many more of these things were out there? Well, according to a 2002 article in the Portland Tribune, 26 of them had been built across the United States. After spending way too much time trying to track them all down, I've managed to identify 22 of them. So that's what we'll be looking at today. Where they were located, when they were in operation, and what ultimately happened to them. To start things off, we can say definitively that Philadelphia, Pennsylvania is where the story begins. In the Christmas season of 1946, Wanamaker's department store introduced the Rocket Express, a miniature monorail that would take kids on an aerial tour of the 8th floor toy department. The ride was an instant hit, and soon became one of Philadelphia's most iconic Christmas traditions. As one person later recalled, the most amazing sight to me was the huge monorail that hung from the ceiling. I remember tugging my parents along, hurrying to buy tickets so I could ride that train. Looking down over all those toys and seeing the model trains in the glass-enclosed display case that seemed to take up half the floor. What a sight for a kid to see. Sometime in the 1950s, the ride was updated with a streamlined rocket nose. After nearly four decades of operation, the ride was retired in 1984. Today it's preserved at the Please Touch Museum in Philadelphia. Another monorail opened in 1946 at the Sears and Roebuck department store in Chicago, Illinois. In this case, there's practically no information on it, but we do have this photo to prove it was there. A third monorail debuted at Boston store in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This one ran above the toy department on the building's seventh floor. People online only seemed to mention it being there in the 1960s. But then I came across this vintage ad for the store. This is made to look like a letter from Santa, and invites kids to ride the Rocket Express monorail. This ad is apparently from 1946, which confirms the Boston store ride as one of the first to open. And since we know it was still there in the 1960s, that means it lasted for at least 20 years. Speaking of Milwaukee, multiple people have also recalled a monorail at the nearby Gimbel's department store. I haven't personally found any evidence to support this, and there seems to be some question whether they're actually remembering the ride at Boston store. Since the stores were only a few blocks from each other, it's reasonable to assume that those memories could blend together. So without any firm evidence, I'm going to leave Gimbel's off the map. The next monorail opened in Baltimore, Maryland in the following Christmas season of 1947. This one was at Stewart's department store, and similar to the others, it was named the Rocket Express and ran above the toy department. There's very little information on it, but in this case we actually know why. Nearly 20 years later, someone involved with the project said, It was attracting too many kids. Stewart's paid off our contract and asked us to remove it. Their elevators and escalators just didn't have the capacity to handle the additional loads. So the Baltimore ride was apparently so popular that it was removed almost immediately. The next ride to open was in Newark, New Jersey in 1948. This one was at the Kresge Newark department store and ran above the second floor toy department. Similar to the ride in Philadelphia, this one was given the rocket treatment sometime in the 1950s. It's unclear how long this ride lasted, but there's evidence of it at least through 1956. In 1949, another monorail debuted in Minneapolis, Minnesota. 
This one opened on the fourth floor toy land of Donaldson's department store, and lasted at least as late as 1960. A ride on the monorail only cost 9 cents. To put that in perspective, you could either let your kid ride it 66 times, or for the same money you could buy them this life-size undressed baby doll. Which Christmas memory do you think they would want? Another monorail opened at Herpelsheimer's department store in Grand Rapids, Michigan. This one debuted as Santa's Rocket Express in 1949. In 1976, it was rethemed completely as the Caterpillar Express. Because, let's face it, your kids weren't going to be able to sleep on Christmas Eve anyway. At some point the ride also had this train-like design, I think in the 1980s? But in the late 90s, it changed one more time to the Dino Express. The ride was finally retired in 2000, and donated to the Grand Rapids Public Museum. The vehicles were restored to their original 1949 appearance, and are now displayed at the museum every year during the holidays. Another monorail opened in Manhattan, New York in 1949, and was the second to be operated by the Wanamaker's department store chain. The ride operated over the Toyland displays on the second floor, and lasted at least through 1951. A fourth monorail in 1949 opened in Fort Worth, Texas at Leonard's department store. The ride was very popular with locals, boasting over 100,000 riders during its first season. There's evidence of the ride lasting at least through 1954. As one person later recalled, I look back now, and it wasn't but a few feet above the shoppers' heads. But back then, it seemed like it was in the clouds. Some of the kids threw popcorn and pennies at the shoppers. Others just hawked a loogie and spit, so Leonard's put a wire screen on the windows. So that wraps up the first batch of rides that were opened in the 1940s. But before we keep going, let's shift our attention to a question we haven't asked yet. Who was building these rides in the first place? There's very little information to go on here, but most modern sources credit the Loudoun Machinery Company as the builder of these rides. Historically, William Loudon invented a hay carrier in 1867 that used a monorail track to efficiently stack hay bales. With this and many other patents, the Loudon Company became a major name in American farm equipment and barn construction. By World War I, Loudon's industrial monorail system was put to extensive use in factories, and this soon became the company's main focus. By the end of World War II, Loudon monorails had become an essential part of American manufacturing. As the story goes, Loudon repurposed their track system for kiddie rides after the end of the war. We know the Christmas monorails started appearing in 1946, so the timing certainly checks out. But the answer isn't quite that simple. See, in 1950, the next known kiddie monorail was built in Fairyland Park in Lyons, Illinois. I haven't been able to dig up any photos of the ride itself, or any clues about how long it was there. But it was announced in an article in the Billboard, which said, Clinton Clark, owner of Rocket Express Systems Inc., Oak Park, Illinois, directed erection of this ride. He said similar models had been used previously in several department stores during the holidays, but that the Miller Park was the first to have an outdoor model. There's no mistaking this is the right company, as the Rocket Express name was used on many of the rides themselves. Historian Jeff Clemens elaborates on this, writing, a former employee of Milwaukee's Boston store, Clark had gotten the idea for the ride from the Boston store's president, who suggested making a train ride that would be elevated above the store's display cases in order to conserve and free up floor and wall space. It seems Clark took the idea so seriously that he left to start Rocket Express, and then signed on his former employer as one of the first customers in 1946. Regarding the Loudon theory, the Mostum Barnes Preservation Committee writes, Web searches uncovered newspaper reports about this monorail, where it was called the Loudon Supertrack monorail. Other web pages also mentioned Loudon. However, when questioned, some ex employees who had worked at Loudon in the 1940s and 1950s said that they did not remember any passenger carrying monorails being built by Loudon, raising the question of the accuracy of the newspaper reports. So, if Loudon wasn't the builder, why do so many sources claim this was the case? There's actually a little more to this story, but for now let's put a pin in that, as we still have a lot of rides to get through. 
Okay, so the next monorail in our list opened at Edwards Department Store in Syracuse, New York. I'm not sure when exactly it started running, but I found mentions of it as early as 1955. This ride was called the Toyland Rocket Ship, or sometimes Santa's Rocket Ship, and was given the streamlined rocket nose we've seen before. A former president of the store later recalled, A lot of people seemed to hit on the monorail as one of the great memories of Christmas. A lot of kids would come in with squirt guns and go up on the monorail, and then let shoppers have it. The last ads I could find for the ride were in 1969, but Edwards was demolished just three years later in 1972, so it's possible that the ride was torn down with the building itself. The next ride debuted at Rich's Department Store in Atlanta, Georgia. Most modern sources claim that it opened in 1953, but historian Jeff Clemens writes that it debuted on October 13, 1956. My own research agrees with this, as I couldn't find any mentions of the ride before that point. Either way, it debuted as the Snowball Express and ran above the store's toy department. But a few years later, in 1959, it was completely rethemed to the Pink Pig Flyer, with the pig herself later named Priscilla. Riches sold the ride in 1964, but after public outcry from locals, it was brought back the following year. With the store now being remodeled though, Priscilla was moved to the seventh floor roof. A second ride vehicle named Percival was added, so they became known as the Pink Pig Twins. The ride was eventually donated to the Atlanta History Center in 1996. The Pink Pig tradition was carried on by a new kitty train for many years, but now even this version has been retired. Fortunately, the original Priscilla and Percival are still preserved today, and are often put on display during the holidays. The next known ride opened at Curvin's Department Store in Columbus, Georgia. I only found two mentions of it, both in 1958. But we do have this illustration and the Rocket Express name to confirm this was indeed part of the same family. Also in 1958 was a new monorail at Harvey's Department Store in Nashville, Tennessee. This one ran above Toy City on the building's fourth floor, and operated for at least a couple of years through 1960. Closing out the 1950s was a new monorail in Portland, Oregon, which opened at the Meyer and Frank Department Store in 1959. This one was called the Skyliner Monorail for most of its run, but in the later years it was renamed to the Santa Land Monorail. As one person later recalled, I rode the Meyer and Frank monorail as a small child in the 60s. It was only a fuzzy memory when I was an adult living in another state, so imagine my joy at rediscovering it on a visit to Portland in the late 80s when my own children were small. I was beginning to wonder if I had imagined it. With the impending closure of Meyer and Frank, the monorail's final season was in 2005, ending a local Christmas tradition that had lasted for over 40 years. The monorail's metal car is preserved by the Oregon Historical Society and remains in storage. The front car is preserved by the Portland Business Alliance and is often put on display at Pioneer Place Mall during the holidays. Five years after the Portland ride opened, the next one appeared in St. Louis, Missouri in 1964. This was installed at Styx, Bear, and Fuller's department store, where it ran above the toy department on the fifth floor. I find it interesting that they advertised the ride as the first of its kind in the Midwest, which by this point I think we can safely say is incorrect. Apparently the ride was popular though, because in the following year, Styx, Bear, and Fuller added a second one to their nearby store in Jennings. By 1968, both rides were rethemed as the Gumdrop Express, but I saw no mention of them after this point. Next up is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which actually had two monorails. The first was at Gimbel's department store, which debuted the ride as the Lilac Special on May 1, 1965. Throughout the year it operated on Saturdays, until the arrival of the Christmas season, when it was rethemed as Rudolph. The Rudolph version returned for the 1966 holiday season, but I didn't find any traces of it after that. A couple years later in 1968, the second Pittsburgh ride was installed at Northway Mall. It was supposed to have its opening ceremony on November 12th, but the equipment actually got lost in transit. The Berwick Enterprise wrote, The monorail cars and tracks being shipped from Fairfield, Iowa to Pittsburgh by train were lost in transit. 
Officials at the shopping center said the ribbon-cutting ceremonies will be held November 22nd, if they find the train. Fortunately, the shipment was found, and the delayed ceremony took place on November 22nd as planned. It seems the ride was only at Northway Mall for about a month or so. If that seems short, it's because the Rocket Express Company had started leasing the monorails as seasonal installations. This was following the new trend of shopping malls, which seemed to want more flexibility in how they use their interior spaces throughout the year. The next known ride opened at the Winter Park Mall in Winter Park, Florida. This one debuted in August of 1968 as the Back to School Monorail. A few months later in November, the ride was rethemed as the somewhat unsettling Reindeer Monorail. Again, this one only seems to have been there through a single Christmas season. Only a few months later on Easter Sunday of 1969, the mall sustained a major fire. It's possible the ride was still there when this happened, but I'm guessing it was already gone by that point. The third monorail in 1968 opened in Rochester, New York at the Midtown Plaza Mall. This one was supposed to be a temporary setup like the ones in Pittsburgh and Winter Park, but locals loved it so much that it became a permanent fixture of the mall, and a staple of Christmas traditions in Rochester. In 2007, it was announced that Midtown Plaza would soon be closed permanently and demolished. The monorail was part of the mall's final holiday season, with its last run on Christmas Eve 2007. The ride vehicles were preserved, and are now on permanent display at the New York Museum of Transportation. Finally, we have the last known monorail, which debuted at the Morristown Mall in Morristown, New Jersey in 1971. There's not much I know about this one, but it was called the Santa Land Monorail Express, and remained in operation at least through 1973. And with that, we finally covered all 22 rides I could find across the US. Now that we have the full picture, let's try to clear up the confusion about Loudoun Machinery and Rocket Express. The Mosdom Barnes Preservation Committee offers a simple explanation, writing, Probably Rocket Express purchased the monorail structure and propulsion system from Loudoun, then built the passenger cars for the department stores. This makes perfect sense, and easily explains why both companies seem to be responsible. The writer doesn't have a first-hand source to back this up, but here's something interesting. If we look back at that monorail that got lost on the way to Pittsburgh, the article said it had been shipped from Fairfield, Iowa. But Rocket Express wasn't based in Fairfield. Loudoun Machinery was. So in a weird twist of fate, this shipping fiasco may be one of our only tangible links between the two companies. To help confirm this, I asked all of the preservation groups around the country whether they had anything on file about the manufacturer. The New York Museum of Transportation came back with the most detailed answer, and it also confirmed our theory. The rides were built and sold by Rocket Express, and the track system itself was built by Loudoun. So I think it's safe to say we've got our answer. I'm also pretty satisfied having found 22 of these rides. We don't actually know if the Portland Tribune's claim of 26 is even correct. But either way, I'd honestly be surprised if there weren't more of these rides in other cities too. Collectively they spanned over 60 years, delighting millions of children across multiple generations. It's no wonder that the Christmas monorails are still fondly remembered. They gave the gift of childhood nostalgia, which is perhaps one of the greatest gifts of all. <laughs>